here from Corindale Farm located in Northeast Oklahoma. We just moved here on 2.5 acres and so we are in the process of converting it into a homestead where we can grow lots of food for our family of six and then slowly working on dreams of starting a flower farm. So that's one of the reasons why I am starting so many flowers this year and maybe should start more vegetables. But another day, more seeds. So if you watched the previous video where I tried soil blocking for the first time, I'll link it in the description so you can watch that. I am going to go traditional seed starting today with your traditional seed trays. This is a 72 cell and I have one, two, three, four of them. 72 times four, do the math. That's how many flowers I'm starting today. So let's get started. Okay, so just like with soil blocking, I need to start out with pre-moistened seed starting mix. I guess with the, with the soil blocks, I got away with doing potting mix, but for these cells, I wanna to try to use a good quality seed starting mix. So I've got my bucket, I've got my dirt, I got my water, and so we're gonna get it all pre-moistened and ready. And then we're gonna fill all the trays so that I have kind of an assembly line then I'm gonna get my seeds out and I'll show you what I am starting in my first four trays. I did another video about maximizing your growing space in my living room. Cause I don't, I have four kids, so I don't have a spare bedroom. So I can't really create a growing room yet. I just don't have the space, too many babies. So I've got a grow light, grow rack in my living room. And I did a big one. I did a video about it of maximizing truly the most amount of plants you can on one storage rack. And so after doing dahlias and soil blocking, I have two levels left. So that means I have eight trays left in my setup until things start going out in the field and levels, what do you wanna call them, levels? Rows, racks, start freeing up to start even more flowers. So we're gonna do four today, and then maybe in a couple weeks, another four for the faster growing flowers like zinnias and cosmos that love the heat, grow fast, I don't need to start them yet or they're gonna be ready to go out before I'm ready for them and then they're gonna languish in their trays and be unhappy and I'll be frustrated, so I'm just gonna be patient on those. Okay, seed starting mix. Ah! This is technically a house plant water can so it just made a huge mess. Okay, get dirty. Oh my gosh, that was like not even enough at all. Blah. Okay. One of the reasons you want to pre-moisten your uh, seed starting mix is because it is really hard to moisten this stuff when it's completely dry because there's a lot of peat moss in it and that takes a while to absorb the liquid. And so if I were to fill this with dry soil and then seed it and then pour water, all the water would just pool on top and sit like little puddles. And that's gonna dislodge your seed. It's gonna get it out from the center. It might even kick it out or overflow. And it's gonna take forever to work its way down. So it is just so much easier to do this step ahead of time Start with already moistened soil to fill your cells. And then when you do go to water, it's likely to absorb the water a lot easier than if you were starting out completely dry. Now I don't need it quite as wet and crazy as I did my soil blocks that need, that don't have um, walls essentially, plastic walls holding them together. So I really needed that to stay damp to get started. This stuff, I just need to give it a head start in the moisture. Ooh, I found a water pocket. Yeah. Get it started in the moisture department so that when I do go to water, I'm not just dealing with a puddle. Try not to pour it all out. That would be kind of gross. Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna get these filled kind of assembly line style because then I can just wash my hands once once they're all filled. Okay. So I've got my four trays filled. I'm not sure if you can see this in the shop, but I've got one more tray. I did a soil block, so some of the soil I had left over. Because I have a couple more things I wanna try out that I don't need in a quantity of 72 per tray, 
um, just the little 20 brownie bite square. I'm gonna try some random things. My goal this year is to really try a million things, throw a million things in the ground, see what works, take lots of notes, learn. I know I can grow zinnias, cosmo sunflowers. I know I can do that. I'm going to do that, but you're not gonna grow, <laughs> no pun intended. You're not gonna grow if you don't try new things. And I bet I totally fail with some varieties. Uh, but some things maybe do go really well and I really enjoy them and then they're gonna be in my garden um, in years to come. So we're just gonna try. This might look like a ton of varieties as you watch these videos, and it is. I would recommend maybe not doing this and picking like five if you have a smaller garden space, but here on our two and a half acres, I've got place space to play around, experiment, fail. Yeah, my fail might be on a grander scale than a little patch in a pot in a garden or something, but I don't care. I'm gonna learn, it's gonna be fun. So, I've got my seeds. I'll link in the description the storage container I use, but it's from Michael's, and it's a photo storage, and it comes in a box with a bunch of them, and I usually put tape and label what it is so I can do raised garden direct sow and put all the seed packets there for that. And then you can just grab it when you need it for a project. But what I did is I had an empty unlabeled one. I went through my seeds that were gonna go in these trays and popped them in here to bring it out. So if you watch my soil blocking video, maybe you won't have seeds flying across the, uh, the field. That would be a good, good thing. Okay, so I also wrote down what I am doing so that I know how I'm allocating these trays. So let's get them laid out. I am doing a celosia tray, tray. I'll put pictures on the screen. I'm doing two different types of celosia. Where do I put this? I'm doing flamingo purple and pampas plume, pompous plume. Two different kinds, but they're both celosia, so I'm gonna do half and half in, my, in one tray because they have the same same requirements to germinate. So we'll put those there. What else am I doing? I am doing white dill, ammy white dill. I'm going to do probably a third of the tray. And then the other two thirds, I'm gonna do yellow asters and purple asters. So these I got for free in New Mexico during a seed exchange. So I got these for free. So I don't know what the germination rate is gonna be on these since someone collected them but I didn't buy asters for the year and I had the space, so I thought it would be fun. I'll probably sow a couple seeds per cell in case I have lower germination, but I've got yellow and purple, so we'll see if they come out, they'll be fun. I've got euphorbia and basil are gonna share a tray. Euphorbia, I've heard, can be kind of tricky. I've never grown it before. I've never grown most of these before, but I'm just looking at the seed packet. I'm doing my best. I'm not using all the seeds, so if one of these trays fail, I'll have time for some of the varieties to try a different method. Some of these prefer direct sowing, but I'm a little impatient, so I'm experimenting with starting inside. And if it fails, well, then I'll use the rest of the seeds to direct sow. So cinnamon basil, it's like a purple basil, and euphorbia has really pretty variegated leaves that's good for a filler in a bouquet. So they're gonna share a home. And then I've got a whole tray of mixed gomfrina. I had bought a pink gomfrina too, for the life of me, I cannot find it. I have no idea where it is. So for now, since it's mixed, we're just gonna do one full tray of gomfrina. And what else do I have in here? Okay, so these are the soil blocks. The soil blocks are going to be Indian Summer, Black-Eyed Susan, Rebecca, Baby's Breath, which I've heard is a nightmare to get germinated, so that's why I'm just gonna do a one soil block worth. And then coxcomb, it's a type of celosia. It looks kind of like brain coral. It's kind of weird and almost unattractive. But I think it'd be really cool to try to grow. It's called Jessica Mix. So those are gonna go in my soil blocks. So let me bring you in closer as I seed one of these trays. Okay, so each seed has different needs. And so it's really important to know how to read a seed packet. Okay, so there is germination, temp, and light. So celosia wants to be between 68 and 78 degrees, which is about room temperature, and it needs light to germinate. Needs light to germinate, that is important. That means that I do not cover the seed 
don't press it into the soil. I'm putting it right on top. It needs light. Some don't want light, some are buried. So really what you need to think is like, what does this look like in nature? What is happening in nature when a flower naturally reseeds itself? I'm trying to replicate that inside in my growing conditions. Cover lightly, so with my vermiculite, bottom water, which is exactly what these trays can do, and keep moist. So this is what we're gonna do for celosia. We're gonna do half and half. So, oh math, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, right here, it's my cutoff line. Okay, so we're gonna start with celosia flamingo purple. I have my tape out to try to be better about lay, oh, nightmare. Oh, these are tiny. Look at this. Oh, this is like Snapdragon hell. Okay. Look at these babies. Look at this. Tiny little things. So some people take a wet toothpick and put it in each of them. I think that's really smart. I think that if I had the time and I wasn't up against nap time, I would sit here and calmly do it. And it actually sounds like a really nice, quiet activity, but I'm not gonna get this done if I risk that. So we're gonna do our, our best with the pinch and pray method. One, two, might even do a couple in each just because kind of hard to tell if you're even dropping it in. So as I'm doing this, I thought this would be a good time maybe to explain the name of our farm, why we called it Coram Deo, what it means, and what our goals are this year. So Coram Deo means, is Latin, and Coram Deo means before the face of God. And the meaning of that is that everything that we do matters because everything that we do, God sees. And so because of that reality, good and bad, all of our choices, all of our words, all of our behavior and actions matter, and it should be done to God's glory. And so we thought that name was a wonderful reminder that every single thing you do every day matters. You're either glorifying God in your words and your actions, or you're not. And so it's a great reminder on our own behavior, but it's also a goal that my husband and I have in general in living our life, living our Christian life and raising our children, that every single thing, every single day matters. And it's an opportunity every single time to do something for God's glory. So when I'm changing my umpteenth gross diaper, am I doing it with a joyful heart and in a way that glorifies God? or not. And let me tell you, if you think about that just in one day, it is sobering, it's convicting. And so we thought that name really summed up everything that we're trying to do in our life. And it's a good reminder. And theology matters. Everything matters. We're not just go to church on Sunday, forget about it the rest of the day and weak as if that has no bearing. No, every single thing we do, say, think, is done quorum Deo. It's done before the face of God. So that's a little behind the scenes. I'll also link a really helpful article that my husband and I read about that concept, which really led us to want to name the farm quorum Deo. I'll link it in the description if you're interested in fleshing out that thought a little bit more with some verses, supporting scripture verses, and a little more depth behind it. Oh dear, you went here, you went here. Um, get them labeled before, oh my gosh, my brain moves on to the next and totally forgets. Oh, my vermiculite. Where are you? Here you are. I use this with soil blocking too. It's a fine little layer of dust, essentially, that keeps the surface 
moist so the seeds are less likely to dry out as fast but it's not so heavy as a soil because if you remember the seed packet said it needs light to germinate so we can't rely on soil over top to keep things moist and snug so vermiculite's a great choice also i've read that it can help minimize algae growth that can sometimes occur with your seeds with all the moisture and and heat under the lights algae is unlikely to kill the plant but i don't know green slime on your seedlings looks kind of gross so all right one tray done labeled three more to go okay next up we have amy dill and the two asters so the reason i'm putting these two together i know it's breaking the rules you're supposed to in general just do one variety because they have different needs but both of these like cooler temperatures to germinate they don't want to be in the 70s like the celosia does they want it much cooler and so i'm thinking i'm going to put them together and then i'm going to put them somewhere in a much cooler part of the house maybe even out in my shed which can get pretty cool for a couple weeks to let them chill a bit more and then bring them in under the light and see what happens. So that was my thought process for putting these together. We are halfway done, we're flying. So my next shared tray is going to be cinnamon basil and euphorbia. So they both are fine in a 60 to 75 degree room. They both want to be covered. So I'm not going to sow them on top. I'm going to push them down a little bit and sprinkle some soil on top and then my vermiculite layer. It's interesting, euphorbia says germination can be sporadic, which I love the concept of. So again, I might do a couple seeds per and see what happens with this one. This one's totally new to me. Basil, I think, is going to germinate just fine. And um, we'll see how many seeds I got in here. I might not do a full, a full half here. Oh, label. Woo, label, 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 label. Number three is done. Last but not least is the Gomfrina mix. Gomfrina grows like gangbusters and is a great filler, so I'm excited about a mix. I bought, like I said, the raspberry pink. I'm sure it'll show up somewhere. Maybe I can pop it in when I find it. But we're gonna go with this. Okay, one eighth to one quarter inch deep. So this one's gonna get the whole pricks dropped in, covered with soil. Vermiculite. Here we go. You're supposed to tell me. I didn't label. I didn't label. I didn't label. Last but not least, I'm gonna quickly do this soil block here. So I've got rutabecchia, um, celosia coxcomb, and baby's breath. I'm gonna do two rutabecchia.
Awesome. Okay, so everything is filled, seated, covered, labeled, and ready to go. So I'm gonna take them all into the grow light space. Again, if you wanna see where all of these are gonna live and grow, watch that video linked below of what my grow light setup looks like. But they're gonna go in there, under lights, humidity dome to keep them nice and cozy, except for the Aster Euphorbia tray, which I'm probably gonna go try to find a cooler space for them to live for a little bit. And what else am I doing in life? What am I doing? Dahlia's next? I don't know. Subscribe and come back and see what I figure out the next project to do. Bye, everyone.